So in the previous video, we talked about ketoenol tautomerization. We showed how a ketone is always existing in equilibrium with an enol, and how those uh, are uh, turn into each other just by doing two proton transfers. You put a hydrogen onto the oxygen, and then you take the hydrogen off of the alpha carbon. And so they're constantly existing in an equilibrium, and this that makes this pi bond nucleophilic, and so the alpha carbon can sort of act as a nucleophile now. But it, it, they do e act in equilibrium. The ketone doesn't just turn into the enol, they turn into each other. Exercise 22.2 is asking to see the mechanism for the reverse process. Um, if, if you just had the mechanism we drew for the previous process, um, that we drew in that previous video, then all the ketones would just turn into enols, but the enols are turning back. And so to emphasize the point that these exist in an equilibrium, anytime you have one, you have the other, let's draw the mechanism like they're asking here for how one cyclohexen, cyclohexene all, that's what this is here, would turn into cyclohexanone, what we had originally. So let's draw the reverse mechanism of what we had before. So we'll start with the enol, and it's just like before, it's going to be two proton transfers. We're going to take, we're going to add a hydrogen onto the alpha position, and we are going to take a hydrogen off of the oxygen. So it's acid catalyzed yet again. Uh, so we see that here. They want it to know, know if it's to draw it when it's acid catalyzed. The same reaction happens. It can be happen in a base catalyzed mechanism too, but that one is sometimes a little easier to see. So here we're drawing the acid catalyzed mechanism. Any acid, any strong acid you put into water will give all of its H pluses away, and the acid really turns into hydronium, H3O plus. So we talked in the last time about how that pi bond is a nucleophile. It can act as a nucleophile. So it can act to steal one of these slightly positive hydrogens in hydronium. The electrons would snap back onto the oxygen there. And so what we have here is our first of two proton transfers. And what we get after that is a new hydrogen added onto that alpha carbon. The other carbon that had the double bond lost those electrons, though. So now it has a full positive charge. And what we have here is a resonance structure or a, a, a resonance pattern. You'll remember one of the five resonance patterns, and if you want to review those, I have videos for those for Organic Chemistry 1. One of the five resonance patterns is having a lone pair next to a positive charge, so we have that here. So we can warn the world we have resonance structures. Neither of the structures drawn inside these brackets is the true structure. The true structure is only and always the average of the two. And to say, take the average, we draw this special resonance arrow that has one line and two heads. Notice it's very different from the equilibrium arrow, which has two lines, each with one head. The resonance arrow means take the average of the two molecules. That's the only one that exists. The equilibrium arrow means the structures on either side of this are turning into each other back and forth. So when you have lone pairs next to a positive charge, the curved arrow pattern is that the lone pairs get sucked toward the positive charge, and so they form a sort of pi bond there. So you would have, let me actually, you would have this here. Notice that oxygen now has three bonds and therefore has a full positive charge. The other thing we have after the first step was that hydronium lost an H+, plus, so it's going to be water. And the oxygen there will steal that hydrogen, the electrons will snap back onto the oxygen, and you can see how <clears throat> we would end up with the ketone. So I'm not going to draw these hydrogens in. They're there. They're just implied in the skeletal structure. Um, and so, you know, you have your ketone. So you started with an enol, and you end up with the ketone. And what happened is just two successive proton transfers. 
So the big takeaway from this and the last video is that ketones and enols, or for that matter aldehydes and enols, always, always exist in an equilibrium. Anytime you have one, you'll have the other. And <clears throat> what that means is, if you have a ketone, the alpha carbon can act as a nucleophile because it can use these sort of pi electrons of the enol to do that. And that is exercise 22.2.